In the Middle Ages, the barber surgeon became the poor man's go-to doctor. Someone to deal with the more mundane and dirty jobs. Jobs like bloodletting, pulling out teeth, dealing with minor wounds, rashes, and burns. But as time went on, they gradually became associated with much more skilled but gruesome tasks, such as setting limbs, performing surgeries, even delivering babies and amputations. In this video, we continue our Day in the Life series to see what life was like for the medieval barber surgeon. Now, you might think that big bushy beards and unkempt hair were all the rage in the medieval period, and whilst we can't fully confirm or deny that, we can guarantee that it's not entirely in vogue to look like an Anglo-Saxon these days. Although, we do hear that the monk hairstyle is coming back, and we're not okay with that. To that end, we'd like to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped.com, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. No need for earwax scrapers when you have the best tools at your fingertips, the Manscaped All-in-One Performance Package, which includes the Lawn Mower 4.0 Body Trimmer. It's got skin-safe technology, meaning you're not going to be catching your… well, sensitive regions, shall we say. It's essentially witchcraft, with a cordless charging system and LEDs that show you how much charge you have left. Next up in the mission to not smell like a medieval peasant are the Crop Preserver Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Toner Spray. These work together to help your undercarriage stay fresh all day long, no matter what you're doing. Use the Crop Preserver Deodorant after your shower to prevent body odour, and the toner for a quick spritz when you need it. Manscaped has you covered from head to toe with a weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer, meaning no viking is going to come in and steal your partner. The Weed Whacker has the same magical skin-safe technology, which means you have no excuse not to take care of yourself. For a limited time only, you can get all of this, plus two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Shorts. So, don't smell like you've been living in the past. Go to Manscaped.com today and get 20% off with our code MADNESS, as well as free international shipping and your two free gifts when you use our code at checkout. Welcome to Medieval Madness. The Zurich artist Jost Amann produced a series of woodcuts which depicted the medievals going about their daily lives. The poet Hans Sachs provided rhyming text for each of the woodcuts. He described the barber surgeon as, quote, I am called everywhere. I can make many healing salves. I can cure new wounds, also fractures and chronic afflictions. Syphilis, cataract, gangrene, pull teeth, shave, wash, and cut hair. I also like to bleed." These were the expected skills of the barber surgeon, who from the 13th to the 16th centuries were generally referred to as just barbers. Their healing services were all that the general population could afford. It was extremely expensive to study at university, meaning that once qualified, a physician's fees were far too much for the average person. There was no chance of a physician making a living in the countryside. Even in the cities, there were few trained physicians. For them, cosmology played a vital role in the health of their patients. They would consult the stars and their signs when determining the best way to manipulate and balance the four humors. In Europe, they were required by law to know the position of the moon when making a diagnosis. The theory of the four humors, which were blood, black bile, yellow bile, and phlegm, can be traced back to Hippocrates and for the medievals was considered to be the key to a healthy body and mind. Badass By the 14th century, the barber surgeon was taking care of the health of commoners, from cutting their hair to pulling their teeth and even performing amputations. Often they had no formal training at all. The church had taken control of all aspects of life by the Middle Ages, including medicine. Barbers were often employed by priests and monks as their heads needed to be tonsured, which is the religious custom of shaving the top of the head. Then barbers were often also asked to shave the heads of patients who resided in monasteries and hospitals. This was done prior to washes or poultices being applied that could cool fevers or draw out bad humours. Because they were experienced in the use of tools such as scissors and razors, it wasn't long before barbers were assisting the monks in performing small procedures. They would also help to carry out bleedings, make ointments for application to wounds and sores before covering with dressings and bandages. 
The Catholic Church became so troubled that surgical procedures were being carried out by clerics that it created a number of policies to prevent it. But it wasn't until 1215 when Pope Innocent III issued a document that banned the clergy from carrying out any form of surgical treatment that things really began to change. Then the profession that we now associate with personal grooming became a much more badass career. Often seen as a glorified butcher by physicians, the following are a number of procedures carried out regularly by the barber surgeons of the Middle Ages. It should be remembered that the medievals didn't understand the causes of bacterial infection, and there was certainly no such thing as anesthesia, although strong wine and ale as well as opioid poppies could help to numb the pain. Cataracts Cataracts are caused by a clouding in the lens of the eye. The proteins bunch together so no light can get in, which leads to a loss of vision and eventual blindness. Today, laser eye surgery is used to correct the problem and is one of the most common and delicate surgeries performed on the elderly. The earliest method of cataract removal was known as couching and dates back to 2000 BCE. Records show that ancient Japanese surgeons would use a very fine needle-like knife and a gold tube known as a cannula. The lens would be cut and the contents of the liquefied cataract would then be sucked out of the eye. In the Europe of the Middle Ages, barber surgeons used quite a sophisticated procedure to cure cataracts, considering the tools available. They would perform couching by cutting the lens and pushing it back deeper into the eye. It meant that the patient would never be able to focus again, but most of them could hardly see anyway, so even the tiniest bit of functioning sight was a bonus. If the procedure didn't work, their vision would stay relatively the same, so there was really nothing to lose. Hernia Repair A hernia happens when an internal organ bursts through the wall that surrounds it. The most common hernia occurs when a part of the intestine pokes through a weak section of the stomach wall, although they can happen in the groin and the brain, as well as other areas. Hernia surgery should be performed quickly because of the risk of gangrene and infection. There is also the risk that the organ could die due to a lack of constricted blood flow. Today, a simple procedure will push the organ back in place and seal the damaged area. In the Middle Ages though, the barber surgeon needed to make enough scar tissue to stop the intestines from popping back out again. First, the patient would be laid flat on a board and tipped backwards so that the intestine would drop back inside the stomach. Then, the barber surgeon would heat a knife until it was red hot and then stab it repeatedly into the patient's stomach, so hard that the blade would hit the pelvis. The skin would now be cauterized, which stopped the intestine from popping back out and prevented any internal bleeding. As an alternative treatment, the area in question could be cut open and acid poured onto the hernia to create scar tissue. Astonishingly, the surgery was very effective, although dangerous with the barber wildly stabbing around and hoping for the best. Battlefield Surgery Taking part in a medieval battle was extremely dangerous, and a lot of the time, the injuries suffered by the soldiers taking part were just too severe for any treatment to make a difference. Most battlefield injuries were caused by the impact of a horse or a blunt instrument such as a mace, or stab wounds from lances, swords, daggers, and arrow piercings from longbows and crossbows. For this type of work, the barber surgeon would carry his own macabre toolkit to provide immediate treatment. With no anaesthetic, pain could only be endured for a short time, so the soldier would have to be patched up quickly before the surgeon moved on to the next casualty. Amputations were carried out with the use of a bone cutter. This was usually a curved knife, the shape meant that it could cut into the skin in a circular motion. This made it easier to gain access to the bone. Once the bone was exposed, a saw could be used to remove the damaged limb. Heavy bleeding was stopped with the use of a cauterizer. These tools were made in many sizes, but always heated up to red-hot temperatures before being applied to quickly seal a wound. As well as sponges soaked in pitch and turpentine, which would be squeezed into the wounds and sometimes set alight to prevent hemorrhaging. Stab wounds to the stomach were very common, and a lot of the time, the intestines would fall out of the victim. Some water and oil would be poured onto the entrails to prevent them from drying out until they could be pushed back inside and the wound could be closed, stitched, and bandaged. Because the patient was conscious, they might tense their stomach muscles during the procedure, so it had to be carried out whilst they were sitting upright. The extraction of arrows was done with an arrow puller, which was similar in design to a pair of scissors. Skin around the arrow would be cut away so that the shaft could be removed cleanly. This kind of procedure was actually carried out on the future English king, Henry V. 
He was hit in the face with an arrow at the Battle of Shrewsbury in 1403. The arrow was embedded quite deeply. Although the shaft was detached, the arrowhead still remained buried six inches deep into the right side of Prince Henry's nose. An arrow puller was used to enlarge the hole, and then the round barrel at the base of the instrument extracted the arrowhead cleanly. Henry recovered well with no sign of any damage to the brain, although he was probably badly disfigured because all of his portraits that were painted after this injury depict his left profile, never his right. By the 14th century, gunpowder had begun to change how wars were fought in Europe. One of the first uses of the cannon was at the Battle of Crecy in 1346. This devastating weapon could take a man's head off or cover him in shrapnel injuries. By the 15th century, guns were being used, although in small numbers. Knowing nothing about bacteria sadly meant that the field surgeons believed the best way to treat wounds caused by gunpowder was to eliminate the poison with the use of boiling oil. It was an extremely painful treatment, which for obvious reasons didn't work. Bloodletting For a lot of people, having their blood let became a regular thing. Many felt a sense of relief after the process, and blood was sent to be the dominant humour. It was thought that if blood was allowed to flow freely, then the humours would be unblocked and tainted blood could be disposed of. Bloodletting was used to treat a huge range of ailments. A barber's red and white striped pole is thought, by some, to have been used as a symbol of blood and bandages, and many advertised their services by placing bowls of blood in their shop windows. Bloodletting could either be carried out with the use of leeches, which would just scratch the surface of the skin, or by the actual cutting of veins. For the breathing of a vein, those larger ones in the forearm or neck would usually be used and cut by the barber surgeon with a scalpel or lancet. Sometimes the arteries in the temples would be punctured with a sharp needle. Head Injury Trepanning was the practice of drilling a hole into the patient's head, or scraping away part of their skull to treat neurological problems. It was thought that exposing the matter surrounding the brain and the spinal cord to outside air would cure their ailment. Skull knitting was another practice that field surgeons might also use on the battlefield. Traumatic head injuries were common in combat. The idea was to push the two broken pieces together and hold them there bound tightly until the bone knitted back and repaired itself. As well as cutting hair, barber surgeons would perform other cosmetic procedures such as picking ears, and by the end of the medieval period, starching beards. The medievals considered them to be healers, and for many surgeries, they were responsible for a huge array of surgical procedures. But as time passed and medical knowledge became more sophisticated, the barber surgeon quickly became just the barber. Although in Melbourne, Australia, as late as the 1950s, a barber would happily pull a tooth out for you without any anaesthetic. Thank you for watching this episode of Medieval Madness. Please do subscribe if you're enjoying these videos, and we'll see you next Friday for another one. Cheers!